and welcome back to Beacon Pines. My name is Usser Taika is continuing us along. Come up and What? Come up and still ringing. Grand picked herself up off the ground. Through the dust and smoke, she looked over to see Mrs. Fratelli helping Hiram Tolliver to his feet. She'd had to beg, borrow, and steal to acquire those explosives. How many nights had she spent visualizing how she'd use them to make things right? And now, her one shot at destroying the source, that damned hole that swallowed so much of her life, was gone. Traded for this jagged hole in a wall and a foolhardy shot at rescuing Rollo. With Fratelli and Tolliver at her side, she stepped through. It was a strange feeling. The last time she'd stalked this maze of hallways, it was in a different body. They quickly rounded a corner to find a group of clipboards guarding a door. Something worth guarding is probably something worth seeing. She leapt forward, brandishing her cane. If her last chance at vengeance for things lost was truly gone, she would just have to fight to keep what she still had. Nice. Fran, what are you doing here? Luca, what are you doing here? We're here to save Nelly. We're here to save Rollo. Hey, Mrs. Luca's Gran. That's awful nice of you. But I'm fine. Oh no, what did they... Gran, there's no time to explain. We have to go now. Come on, everyone. We got a party to crash. They made their way out from deep within perennial harvest, just as Solomon finished up his speech. Thankfully, we can dispense with the formalities from here on out. Solomon pulled a glass vial from his pocket. We gotta stop him! In one smooth motion, he downed its contents. A triumphant smile grew across Solomon's lips. No! Well, I guess that's it. We lost. <sighs> I wouldn't be so sure about that. With a mischievous look, Beck elbowed Luca. Remember when I had the vial behind my back? I might have tweaked his wonder potion with a little change tweaked his wonder potion or malice. Change. Like pocket change? Your unlucky penny. Yeah, I plopped it in the vial when no one was looking. What's that going to do? No idea! That's the beauty of science. Now we observe. You can call me Sharper Valentine. His body and face began to contort and expand as he disappeared into a belching green mist. Holy crap, he's a baby? Yeah, but he's still sharper, right? What he was no longer matters. <laughs> this is an innocent child. I apologize for all the harm my father has caused you. Eris awkwardly what? cradled the squirming child. <laughs> she looked to her brother, her voice shaking with uncertainty. Augustus, what do we... We do what Valentines always do. What must be done? I'll hurry home and prepare a crib for a father or young sharper. <laughs> that would be great help. Thank you. She looked down at the infant with equal parts kindness and terror in her eyes. With a shake of her head, Eris addressed the crowd with a stern scowl. Okay, everyone, the show is over. You may leave now. <laughs> Epilogue. That was funny. Beacon Pines' coldest summer on record came and went without much fanfare. Folks shared what they had and none were left wanting. The new school year was ushered in by the falling leaves of autumn. After everything Luca, Rollo, and Beck had been through, middle school was bearable. The chill of winter didn't seem to bother people much. They kindled a hope for a better future in their hearts. When spring arrived, farmers planted their crops with a sense of joy and optimism. And as the dawn of the first day of summer came again, its light slowly spread through the shallow valley. 
It crept over the town square, across the river, past the neglected welcome sign, and came to rest on a young boy sleeping at dawn, his mind at peace, knowing he is here for a reason. Hey, that's a pretty good ending. <laughs> began moving Walt's old things out of the closet and into storage. <laughs> Mom, I'm ready to go now. You go on without me, I'll meet you there. I've got a batch of jam to finish jarring. It's funny. I only started making jam as a way to send messages without anyone noticing. But now I enjoy it. Alright, I'll go say hi to Rolo first. Is Rolo still an adult? <laughs> I think so. Because this would be like a good ending, but it wouldn't be the best ending then. It'd be a funny ending. Yeah, it would be. Oh, hi. Here you and Rolo have big plans for that little treehouse. Yeah, it started getting crowded after we revoked the max capacity one Rolo, one Luca rule. So we decided to expand. But at least we've got some help with that. How's the internship at Nelly and Ilona's shop going? It's been great. Hoping it helps me get into the School of Agriculture up at State. Also, Nelly says she'd write her letter of recommendation, which would be huge. I just can't help but worry about leaving Rolo. He's grown up so fast, but he's still my little brother. Yet he had a heck of a growth spurt. I don't just mean grown, literally. This morning he was up and finished his chores before I even had breakfast. Well, some of that might be excitement about the treehouse renovations. Don't tell him this because it'll go to his head, but I'm really proud of that little punk. I'm sure he feels the same way, but he's just too dang proud to tell you. I know. Hey Gus, how's the tree planting going? Couldn't be better. So grateful to Alona and Nelly for letting me help. I just wasn't built to be a mayor. Too much bureaucracy. Yeah. We finished cleaning up the sidewalks! What's next? Collapsed. Most of the clipboards skipped town. But some stuck around and dedicated themselves to making things right. Anyone with a knack for art can help paint the new offices. You can count on us. Looks like you really found your calling. Never really felt comfortable telling people what to do. Now this right here. This is something I can be proud of. Okay. <laughs> what the? Little higher. Yup. Little lower. Yup. <laughs> Little higher. Yup. I'm telling you, the angle isn't the issue. We need more power to the radio. Luca, there you are. Would you tell him it's not the angle? Hey, I'm not in charge of antenna redesign. Fine, fine. Iggy, just... Don't do anything drastic until we get back. Who, me? This, you're in charge while I'm gone. Yup. They'll be fine, right? Hopefully. It'll be fine. If we really want mission control to turn into something bigger and better, we have to loosen our grip a bit. You're right. Lead the way. Check in with Beck. This right. way! I'm smart. I know where Slow it is. and dirty harvest. What? That was literally what they changed perennial harvest to, was slow and dirty. <laughs> Hold up, wait, wait, wait. Young Mr. Van Horn, how's little Solomon or Sharper doing? 
seems to enjoy nature more than I. So we do a lot of strolling these days. Is he, uh, you know, tempted to crawl out of his crib and plot world domination? <coughs> yeah. Thankfully, no. I spoke at length with Dr. Modewill, and she feels that Sharper's infant mind was not developed enough to retain his previous memories. For all intents and purposes, the child is unmolded clay. Let's hope he's a little nicer the second time around. That is the objective, yes. But really, all I can do is try and hope. Two activities I am endeavoring to find less distasteful. I think you're doing a great job. And the whole town's ready to help out however we can. Can't wait to teach him how to throw a baseball. Eris did her best to ignore the tears welling in her eyes. That would be acceptable. Well, that's good. No more world domination plans by Sharper. What? Bunnies? There's a whole bunch of cute bunnies. Oh. Yeah, I'm gonna just run into all the children. With perennial harvest gone, <gasps> oh, were left unused. The wild ride. Come one, come all. No one's too big, no one's too small. For Jeff's wild ride. I mean, well, maybe not completely unused. Just one piece of candy. None creed might be. <laughs> for the be. ride of your life. None creed might be too big for it. Who's next? Don't touch it. I have news I think you'll enjoy. This morning I unpacked my last box. You're officially moved in. It's just a box. Let's not blow this out of proportion. Sounds an awful lot like putting down roots. Guess I decide this place is root worthy. <coughs> You're gonna be stuck with me for the foreseeable future. I do have to warn you, most years aren't going to be as interesting as this one. I think I'll manage. Ready? Before we go, there's a bit of a surprise. It's a tree! Mom's prepared this tree especially for you. They didn't have to do that. It wasn't just them. Just uh, about the whole town pitched in. We all owe you. Should do okay in the cold of old beacon pines. And thrive as things warm up. That's perfect. We ready to take Jeff's wild ride to old beacon pines. Let's go! The boingy, the boingy, the boingy, the boingy. Hold up, wait. First, I want to touch the bee's nest. Okay. Luca peeked up at the beehive. It appeared to be deserted. Hmm, that's strange. Throw a rock at it! That's a bad idea. Ah, you got it. Now that's a good looking tree. Being a special occasion and whatnot, the ride's on the house. You're gonna want to hang on tight to that little tree. Yeah. Yippee! Yeah, I'm pretty sure Nuncreed would be too big for that. Huh? I think this is it, the end I've been waiting for. <laughs> Honestly, I began to lose hope of ever finding it. But then you came along. I... I don't know exactly how to thank you. It's hard to explain how much this means to me. It's funny, now that our time together is finally ending, I'm at a loss for words. Let's just watch the end together. Done. Good little tree. The best little tree. Thank you, children. This means a lot. Yeah, thanks for everything. Shucks, I only did what any super awesome best buddy would have done. Probably should give you some time alone now. You good? Yeah, I am. Been a wild year. How are you feeling? Everyone keeps asking me that. I'm fine, really. 
Pa always says the only thing of fitter than a fiddle is a cello. I feel like a dang cello. Well, if you ever stop feeling like a cello, I'm here for you. I know, you don't even have to say it. You two make an awesome pair. Excuse me? We're a trio now. Yep. Hi. Thanks. Just one thing missing now that you're part of our group. Missing? Let me tell you a little story about a man named Hank Atomic. Oh god. I won't be long. We'll be waiting for you back at the phone booth. Don't hit it so hard. I found the perfect way to start our summer. Got some good friends. I'm so proud of you. Your father would be so proud. I know. Mom, can I ask you a question? Do you ever dream about Dad? Not a night goes by that I don't. Are you ever afraid that you're going to forget him? Forget what he looked like? Forget his voice? No, because so much of him lives on in you. You love that old tree, but I know he would have loved this one more. Because his two favorite people planted it. I'll give you two a moment. Hey, Dad. Dr. Mobile says that over the next few years, this place should warm up. You won't have to be so cold for much longer. I think I finally understand why you left that night. There were things you believed in. Big things. Those beliefs were the things that you were made that made you you. When, if you wouldn't have stood up to Sharper, stood up for what you believed in, you wouldn't have been the same person anymore. You had to go. That didn't mean you loved us any less. Might not visit you as much as I used to. I don't know you understand. I was about to say, they've got to wrap it up. What the? No! I want to press B. Oh, I like that right. Give it, give it a sec. You beat the game and got the good ending. I want to see what happens when you press Malice. I do too. <laughs> I want to see what Peck does to him. Will he turn into an old man? I don't know. He might just keel over and die, or he might freak out the way Iggy did and turn into a mutant. But hey, we beat it! Taika got the good ending. Now we're gonna see what happens when you're mean. <laughs> might take us a minute. That was a lot of people. Yeah, they had a ton of backers on Kickstarter. Okay, hopefully this lets us go through that tree. Oh ho! We're back to where we were. Yes! That one. <laughs> Malice. I might have tweaked his wonder potion with a little Malice. Malice? The whiskey from his office? Yep, dude had an unfished glass on his desk. Figured his grow juice could use a little hair of the dog. And I'll call me Sharper Valentine. Oh, this is gonna be good. As he disappeared into a belching green mist. What the? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I call eighty poof whiskey. <laughs> Damn, dude. <laughs> what just happened? The crowd gazed in wow. stunned silence at the now empty stage. Uh huh. <laughs> broken when William Kerr sprinted off stage and into the distance. He was never seen around Beacon Pines or anywhere else for that matter again. Watching yeah, because he's dead. Kerr disappear over the horizon. Wow. Who began to laugh first? A low chuckle that became uncontrolled, heaving laughter. Through his tears, he was vaguely aware that the crowd had begun to laugh with him. Nice. And 
That was unexpected. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, it was. It's an absurd thing for my taste, but who am I to say? I'm only writing the damn thing. Okay. What I just doing? had to see that. Oh my god. <laughs> I think we beat the game. Wait a minute, oh. Ramble. We didn't beat the game. We still yep, have we have Rumble. beat the game. That was all wait, of it, everybody. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Oh, we got Rumble to do? Yes, is a question mark. Uh, skip to where you left off. The balloons. And then we had to end it there. Oh, okay. <laughs> Well, let's finish it then. Up. Hey! <laughs> hey! Did you find the comic book? Yeah. Yep. You got the corn dog? Yeah. Well then, I know it doesn't make up for what I said. But here, you've earned this. Oh, sheepishly handed Luca the balloons. Thanks. You didn't have to go to all this trouble. Sorry I got so mad. Dang it, you were supposed to let me apologize first. Oh, sorry. Now you've apologized twice before me. Just let me do this. Luca, I'm really sorry. With everything that's happened with your mom and all, I've always wanted to be there for you. Be a good friend, you know? When you said you were hanging out with someone else, I kind of freaked out. Oh, well. Still my turn. Felt like if you needed some new friend to help you, it meant that I wasn't good enough. That was selfish and wrong. I was wrong. Sorry, Luca. Okay, apology over. You can talk now. Luca threw himself at Rolo, hugging him as tightly as he could. Rolo, I don't deserve you. I don't deserve you either. That's why we deserve each other. You did good. So, what else do you want to do today? You could snoop around and try and find some info about your mom. Snoop where? Probably sneak into Perennial HQ while everyone's at the festival. Aren't you curious about all this stuff those clipboards write down? What if we get caught? I think I've had enough excitement for one week. Let's just make the rest of the day about us. Really? <coughs> yeah, the rest of the world can wait one more day. No? I've been waiting to get some work done on the MCDC at Mission Control. Game is a bit unpredictable. That sounds perfect. Head to the treehouse. Did you sit up like normal? I'm smart. I knew that. Mm-hmm. I, I was just seeing if you remembered. I'm smart. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Oh, I almost forgot. Ran into your grand this morning. She asked me to give you this. <gasps> I'll wait for you inside if you want to read it now. A letter? Luca, some things are going to happen that might be difficult for you to understand, if I am honest. I hardly understand them myself, but whatever happens, I need you to know that I love you. None of this is fair to you. You have already lost so much. We both have. I wish there was a simpler way forward, but if there is, I haven't thought of it. God knows I've I have everything I've done. I did for you. I hope someday you can accept that. Love, Gran. I love you too, Gran. Luca folded the paper into his pocket and had it up the ladder. What's up with the letter? Anything you want to talk about? Maybe later. Sure, whatever you want. Oh yeah, and then they get frozen solid. You know, you really didn't have to go to all that trouble just to apologize. I know, but we've been looking forward to the festival for weeks. After I ruined everything with my big mouth, this was the best way to make sure you still had a good time without me. Rollo. I was at a loss for words, but that was fine. Words aren't always necessary. Festival seemed nice. Was it nice? We can still go. Nah, this is fine. Well, there's always next year. Sadly, <laughs> this was untrue. A distant rumble shook the treehouse. Huh? What was that? Aw, oh, man, we missed the fireworks? It's not fireworks. 
rocks. It was something the boys couldn't possibly comprehend. Something as old and cruel as time itself. So they am dead. So yeah, that's not a good ending. Okay, now we have seen them all. through the room. A bitter, unfathomable chill. Before they could react, it encased them in ice, two boys. Reunited by friendship, only to be cruelly separated by a malevolence beyond <coughs> reason. And so, our story ends on this melancholy scene. In a silent treehouse turned statuary. In a town brought low by its secrets, sits a pair of friends alone together for the rest of time we end <laughs> that can't be the ending it simply can't i won't accept it and i hope you won't either there are more endings more possibilities oh we've already been through them it. we are just going to have to sort through them all until we find the one that fits we did and that is all of Beacon Pines. I kind of like the Malice one better. <laughs> Just because we highlight the whole festival with confetti! <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that will be all for this one. We have found all the endings of Beacon Pines, and we got the true ending. So, leave a like, comment, subscribe, hit that bell so you can see when we post new things. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Catch y'all in the next one. Bye! Yeah! That was funny. He just went pop.